In this video, I will demonstrate the new features of the GIMP 2.8 text tool. At first glance, the text tool in 2.8 looks exactly like the text tool in 2.6, but actually there's a lot of new features, many of which would have been much more complicated in GIMP 2.6 that are under the hood. To illustrate this, I'm in GIMP 2.8 in single window mode. I will create a new image canvas by selecting File New and accepting the default of 640 by 400 pixels. You can use any image dimension you want. As in GIMP 2.6, you select the text tool from the toolbox by clicking on the boldface A icon. In the tool options, the options for the text you want to enter can be set. I'll change the font to Tahoma, a commonly used sans serif font useful for displaying text on the web, by clicking on the select font icon, the one with the capital A and small a, and scrolling down to the font. The big and little a change as a preview of what the a would look like in that particular font. The font size defaults to 18 pixels. You can change both the font size and the type of units. GIMP supports pixels, inches, centimeters, millimeters, points, and a variety of other types. I'll change the text to 50 pixels. Once we start to add text, the differences between the 2.8 and 2.6 text tool will become clearer. To add text, click on the area of the canvas where you want to enter the text, draw a rectangle which is roughly the area you want the text to occupy, and start typing the text. I'll type red, green, and blue. As in 2.6, the text displays in Tahoma with a size of 50 pixels in black. The text is also left justified. The justification can be changed to right, center, and fill by clicking on the justify icons, also as in GIMP 2.6. I'll click on the center icon. All these settings affect the entire text. So far, nothing appears to be new as far as editing the text goes. However, there's one thing that catches our eye, and that's the on-canvas editing area directly above the rectangle we created, with some new buttons and thingies. What are they? The reason they're there is that in the new text tool, you can change parts of the text. The way to do it is to highlight selected text and change its characteristics. Let's make the word red have a red color, the word green have a green color, and the word blue to have a blue color. First, highlight the red word red. To do that, position the text cursor, the vertical bar, before the R in red. Then left click and drag to highlight the letters R, E, and D. This creates a selection consisting of the word red. Click on the little black square in the lower right of the on canvas toolbar. This brings up the color selection dialog. Change the color to red. Click outside the selection. This deselects the word red and shows that the word red is indeed colored red. The rest of the text is still black because the default color is still black. We can do the same thing for green and blue. I'll position the text cursor before the G in green, hold the left mouse button down, and then drag it until the entire word green is selected. Then I'll click the box in the toolbar again and select a green color. I'll do the same procedure for the word blue. We've achieved our goal. Note that the commas and the word and are still in black because we never selected them. Only the words red, white, and blue have changed color. Suppose I want the word and to be smaller, only 18 pixels. I will highlight the word and and change its font size to 18. I can also raise the word and by changing its baseline to 15 pixels. I can also lower the word and by entering a negative number. I'll change the baseline number to negative 10. Note how the word is below the word white and how it pushes the word blue down a bit as well. This technique is good for superscripts and subscripts like H2O or pi r squared. Note how only the word and is affected, not any of the other words in the text area. We can also change the font itself for the selected text. The selected text can be changed to any font installed on your computer. I'll change the word and to Arial Unicode MS, a font that looks distinctly different from Tahoma. Now the word and is in that font, while the rest of the text is still in Tahoma 50. Finally, we can make the selected text to have bold, italic, underline, and or strike through characteristics. Just as in a word processor, you can combine bold, italic, underline, and strike through. I'll select the red and make it italic and bold. I'll select the word blue and give it a strike through and underline. I'll unselect underline, give, leaving the strike through setting. To clear formatting for the selected text, I'll click on the clear bar icon. In addition, I can control the line spacing and the space between the letters globally. This works similar to a typical word processor. 
What's interesting is that all these changes were done on one text layer. Look at the layers dialog. There's only one layer, the one that has the text red, white, and blue. In GIMP 2.6, you would have needed to create many layers, link them in different ways, merge them down, or whatever, to get the same effect. Note that the global settings affect the entire text. I'll select the word and and click on the center in the text tool options. All the lines of the text are centered. This goes for right and filled. There's a new setting called box type. The default is fixed, which means that the text is word wrapped as you type. However, if you select dynamic, the text does not word wrap. Instead, the rectangle is sized to the size of the text. I'll set the box type setting back to the default of fixed. We can also change the shape of the rectangle in closing the text by dragging on the square handles at the edges of the rectangle. In GIMP 2.8, having one layer has significant advantages. You can apply filters on the entire text. To illustrate, I'll create a drop shadow by selecting filters, light and shadow, drop shadow, and accepting the defaults. A new drop shadow layer has been created with a drop shadow on the entire text. You can group the text and the drop shadow layer by creating a layer group. To do that, click on the layer above which you want the group to be on and select Add Layer Group. I'll change the name of the layer group to Text and Drop Shadow. Then I'll left click and drag the text layer onto the layer group. I'll then left click and drag the drop shadow layer onto the layer group. If you have an image with a lot of layers, layer groups can make your life much simpler by associating layers that work with each other, such as the text layer with its drop shadow layer. To show that this is really a new layer, I'll select the text layer, select the Move tool from the toolbox, and move the text. The drop shadow layer doesn't move. I'll press Ctrl-Z to undo the move of the text layer. How can you make the drop shadow move when you move the text? GIMP 2.6 provided a way, which is to link the two layers first and then move one or the other. This works in GIMP 2.8 as well, and is still the way to do it. I'll link the text layer and the drop shadow layer and move them together. Even if one layer is grouped with another, you still need to link the layers to move them together. This is also true for pixel level changes, such as color adjustments. You'll need to work on the individual layer, not the layer group. Tools that transform the entire text, such as Rotate, Perspective, Flip, Scale, and Shear, do work. To illustrate, I'll select the text and select the Flip tool. I'll flip the text horizontally and then flip it vertically. I'll scale the text to give it additional width. Now I'll rotate the text a bit. You should have some fun experimenting with these. I'll undo these transformations. Multiple text areas are easy to create. Just go to the area of the canvas where you want to start the new text. Size the rectangle to the area of the new text. Left click at the top of the rectangle and start typing. This now gives you two text areas, each of which can be ed edited independently of the other. I hope this gives you a good idea of the power of the new GIMP.8 text tool. Feel free to experiment with it. I'll see you in the next GIMP tutorials. Happy GIMPing!